It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley's are here, and so is the gong because Paul is hot under the collar. Can Mary Jo keep him under control? 1809, the good, the bad, and the ugly. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, episode 595, recorded Wednesday, November 14th, 2018. The power of the gong compels you. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Grammarly. Grammarly is a communication tool that helps people improve their writing to be mistake-free, clear, and effective. Start writing confidently. Go to Grammarly.com slash Windows to get 20% off a Grammarly premium account today. And by LastPass, secure every password-protected entry point to your business. Join 43,000 businesses and start managing and securing your company's password today. Learn more at LastPass.com slash twit. It's time for Windows <laughs> Weekly. Shooting. Windows Weekly time. The gong is is brandished. The, the, uh, gong, the gong is in place. It is in place. <laughs> it is burnished. In the hands of Mary Jo Foley of AllAboutMicrosoft.com. That's the ZDNet blog where... She writes all about Microsoft. Paul Therott is here. He's from therott.com. The Therott. Then there's the gong, which looks really kind of like a bullseye, Mary Jo. I hate to say it. <laughs> More like a yep. bullseye than a, uh, a gong. Yes. Strike here. <clears throat> so um, apparently this first topic is so incendiary <laughs> that Paul doesn't want to yep. go anywhere near it. Yeah. It's basically... I like a no, nope. don't talk yet. A Paul. Note seven. <laughs> I just think it would be better if a cooler head and yeah. voice, okay, perhaps discuss this. Okay, that I. It's a, the the uh, the the headline is <laughs> it's amateur hour <laughs> in Redmond. Guess who wrote that? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> so is this a, is this all about eighteen oh nine, Mary Jo? It Mary Jo. It is. How did you guess, Leo? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So yesterday was yes. Patch Tuesday. Yes, it was. And as I had kind of been thinking was going to happen, Microsoft began to re-release 1809, which is the October Windows 10 update. Now, is this? should I not seek this? Is this a seeker thing? It is a seeker thing, but it's a seeker thing with a little bit of a twist and that they're really going to go much slower than they have lately with this, which is good because they had to pause the update as you may remember for six weeks because of first a data loss issue and there was a zip compression issue. So just been issue after issue after issue. And so oh, have there they been problems? Are, I, I didn't notice but that was all problems. that yeah, was yeah, all not yet. <laughs> you not yet. <laughs> that was all fixed. In the it's insider all fixed, builds, supposedly, yeah, right, yeah. and so yeah. they're they're making it available to seekers on machines that are known to not have problems. So, what machines if would you those go to Windows be? Update, <laughs> yeah, I know. Max. Well, I, I was Macintosh I was actually talking to. Computers. Did you get it, Paul? By the way, on any of the PCs you have by seeking it? Uh, well, I had installed eighteen oh nine yeah. very Before, early on. Here's Remember, our problem. We've all had it. And, yeah, yeah. So we I already had. I mean, I, yeah, I do have some other PCs I could bring online and find out, but um, yeah. no, I, well, I, was, I haven't looked for it. I know. I was talking to Rich Wood from NeoN today, and um, he said he didn't get it on any of the PCs he has, and he has a lot of them, and he was seeking it, and it didn't come through Windows Update on By the way, anything. Uh, this is that's striking because remember when the first version came out, everyone, right. if all you had to do was look at it. you know. I know. Uh, right, and, so and I haven't tried to seek it. Because I, I'm one of those people who is still like, yeah, let everybody else be the guinea pig. I'm not going to be in the first wave of this. Um, right. But it is available again. It's um, They're going to roll it out more slowly. It's not yet on Windows Update. They haven't given us a date when it will be on Windows Update. Um, Windows Server 2019 also started rolling out again yesterday. That one is in the Volume License Servicing Center. And people are downloading it and getting that now. Um, so yeah, it's it's starting again. They claim they fixed it. They say everything's good. Um, people who are who did get it also got a cumulative update yesterday, right? 
right. which has some additional fixes I did get in that. that. Yeah. yeah. It was Patch Tuesday, right? So right. we would get a cumulative update on exactly. Patch Tuesday. Exactly. So all's good there. The part that both Paul and I are kind of surprised, surprised is kind of a mild word here, but I'm surprised <laughs> about is Microsoft also did a blog post yesterday about quality. I was thinking that blog post might say something like I, I like it know? when the audience laughs at the right point. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. always it's yeah. always it's always appreciated. Yeah. Yes. So um, there's a very lengthy blog post, 2000 words or so about quality and how Microsoft does testing. What's changed yeah. since they began testing under Windows 10 as a service? And so I kept reading through it and I'm like, OK, and now they're going to say, OK, here's where we screwed up. Here's what we did wrong. Nope. In fact, that blog post about quality says they are actually improving quality with every release. And it's mm. not a problem. And the Republicans won the midterm election. <laughs> this is the modern could, this is the big the modern way of doing things. Is well, it? as it turns out, not so modern because two years ago when the anniversary came update came out, we had the same exact kind of problem. Microsoft paused the thing for a bunch of machine types because uh, Kindles were exploding or whatever the problem was. There was a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, I, I talked to Microsoft at that time. They put out a blog post just like this at this time. And uh, they were going to learn from the mistakes of the past and they were going to focus on quality and this was never going to happen again. And a um, couple of points to this. A, aside from the fact that the language here is exactly the same as it was two years ago, uh, the issue I have is that they haven't learned from the mistakes of the past. We, we did have after that a couple of, uh, or maybe one, whatever it was, some number of updates that went out reliably. And we, we talked about that. You know, it's, it was interesting for a little while. It got fine. Um, this year's updates have been notably terrible. In fact, I would say these two plus the anniversary update are the notably bl uh, bad feature updates that Microsoft released for Windows 10. So they're shooting about two for five, if my math is correct. But um, the, the issue is that the same problems are happening again, right? Yeah. Um, insiders find problems. They report them. Other people upvote them. Microsoft ignores them. They ship the product publicly. Those problems bite people in the butt. And then they have to readjust. And, you know, in this case, it was bad because they had literally released it uh, publicly. Actually, the anniversary update had been released publicly as well. They didn't, um, you know, hold off on it for six weeks. But they did dramatically slow it down at the time. Mm -hmm. I just... Um, you know, it, it's it, it's like the, uh, you know, that saying about, you know, what do you call someone who keeps making the same mistake and expects a different outcome, you know? Insane. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And I just, I the, the aside from what I just said, and I'm trying to be as calm as possible about this, um, <laughs> you know, so far, they always so cart out the, they, <laughs> thank you, they cart out the adults at this point. You know, the guys who've been like Mike Fortin has been at Microsoft since I think 1998, certainly whatever the year was from the NT days. Uh, working at kind of a kernel level type of thing. He's responsible for quality. I'm sure this is personally embarrassing to him. But um, I, at, at some point, you just hear the same excuses over and over again. And it's you realize you're in this abusive lang you know, uh, relationship. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I, you're just hearing the same things over and over again. Yeah. And I just, you know, I, I, the, it's you know what I was expecting? What I was expecting and I was surprised was not there. Like I, I didn't expect a, um, an apology. Like I know some people were thinking there was going to be an effusive apology. I'm like, I don't expect that. But what I do yeah. expect is an explanation from them about how it happened. So they told us, you know, it was a known folder issue. It was this, it was that. But the, the part in the quality blog that it doesn't spell out that I wanted it to spell out is how did this happen though, right? Because. Yeah, well. Um, I, I think the like issue when, there is that if, if they had come out publicly and said what it was, yeah. they would literally have to confirm that they just made the same mistakes they've yeah. been making all along. True. You know, True. And uh, we can go back and look at what they wrote, their little post-mortem on the anniversary update, which is probably when they in, in, uh, introduced John Cable to the world, that poor punching bag. And, right? Hey, and hey, hey. It, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to be compassionate to John Cable. That's what I'm mean, I <laughs> Um, cause he has to be the face of this, you know, um, I, I, the issue is they haven't learned their lesson. That's, that's my yeah. point. You know, they, if they were to come out and say, well, this is what happened, we'd say, but you just did this two years ago. What, what do you, yeah. uh, you're supposed to learn. It's supposed to get better I know. in their well, little narrative. It does get better. They've got that cute little graph, I know. you know, uh, 
I think Raphael said it's funny because he tweeted this, and I was saying this privately to someone, and someone pointing it pointed it to me and said, "Hey, Raph's saying exactly the same thing." Mm-hmm. You know, at some point you get beaten up so much you just stop trying. And I think there's a thing going on with Windows 10 where people are just like, "Screw it, it's not worth giving feedback." They don't listen to any of it, mm. and you know they can show this little graph where like, "Oh, look, you know the incidents are going down." No, the incidents reported are going down. I, right. I think people are just it's just this is just the way it is. You know, mm-hmm. I, I think we've kind of given up collectively. I think a, a lot of people think, yeah, okay, it came out, it's got bugs, but you know what? They're going to issue two or three or four cumulative updates right after it starts rolling out, and they're going to fix all the things that were still broken. <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'm not well, saying that's a, the great way to go, but I, I think that's kind of what people are expecting now, like the the new normal. We shouldn't. Okay, that's a really low expectation to have for a product that's as mature as this and as vital no, to your day to day. I, but it just to to keep this on kind of a positive level, I've said in the past, you know, one of the things I really like about the last two feature updates from a kind of a functional perspective is that they're very low on what I call nonsense features, like these big mm-hmm. explosive, like oh my god, look at this, it can edit videos, it's really cool, and really focusing a little more on the fundamentals now. Uh, <laughs> releasing an update that has data loss issues, obviously you're missing out something on the fundamentals. But the the good news from this little episode, which has been very public, is that Microsoft has come out and said, look, going forward, we're, we are going to focus on the fundamentals. We're going to focus on right. quality. And I, I'm i at the point now where I'm kind of a, I'm in a kind of prove it to me <laughs> kind of stance, me I guess, at this point. Yeah. Uh, and I think everyone should be. But um, I, I, will, I will at least take that as a good sign Right. Um, That's the very last paragraph of this 2000 word blog post, which says, you know, we know people are facing frustrating issues. We pledge to do more. But if you read what they say, then it's like, okay, but what, what are you going to do? Because it's just very vague. Like we have tools that can work on quality. We're going to leverage all these tools. We want to share more about our approach, but not yet. So I'm like, okay, when though, when are you going to tell us what you're doing? You know? Well, and that might be I, up to John. That might be the John Campbell might thing. Be, he might he might, might be and, posting going forward about that kind of stuff. I and I was thinking maybe it's tied to 19H1, um, which comes out next spring, right? Um, maybe that's when yeah. they'll say. And here's how we're going to do things differently. Because I I wondered if they were going to do some of our propositions and plans, like you know, of the two updates, just make yeah. one of them yeah, all yeah. about quality and fundamentals. They didn't say um, they're going to do that. Um, but you know, I think maybe. something that everyone might agree with is even when things seem to be going well, I, I think all of us kind of thought it was odd how quickly they jam these things out at, at people. Mm-hmm. In fact, if anything, it was accelerating. And I, I hope that what this does, at least in part, is to slow that down in general. I, I don't understand why 50% of the user base has to be on the next version of Windows 10 within 30 days or whatever the figure was. Um, it, it's, I, I, I don't, there's no rush, you know, there is no, they're doing quality updates every month. Right. And, mm-hmm. uh, those are the important things I think to keeping the user base in sync. You know, mm-hmm. um, if, if you don't have the, whatever the five big features are in 1809, I mean, big deal. I mean, you can wait 30 days, you can wait 60 days. You would, most people would never even notice. You know, and I just never understood the speed. It was almost like they were just trying to make a point. Um, yeah. Which, of course, they did. <laughs> just not the right point. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, hopefully there are going to be some quality fixes, um, even which makes it tricky because they don't want to say there's a quality problem. But then the, at the end, they're like, yeah, but we're going to do some things about quality. So if it didn't need fixing why would you do, be doing things to fix it? <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Right. 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 I just, I, I guess, you know what? A couple of teams at Microsoft are really good at doing these postmortems. Um, TFS always did these great ones. Brian Harry was no, known for being very upfront. Like, yeah, we really screwed up. Here's what we did wrong. Here's what we're going to do. Here are the five steps we're taking now to fix this. Yeah. Office 365 does that sometimes. Azure sometimes. GitHub just did a big um, postmortem on something that happened before Microsoft actually acquired them. But it was so in-depth and thorough, it yeah. kind of gives you confidence. It's like, okay, they're being very transparent and very so, upfront. For whatever it's worth, I am positive that internally that did occur. 
And that yeah, the reason we're not hearing about it publicly is is either exactly what I said earlier, just the almost political nature of that, because there, there may be some sense of responsibility that could extend into legal worlds that I don't understand fully um, that they'd be exposed to if they admitted that they just kept making the same mistake over and over again. Um, and there were data lo- there was data loss associated with it. It's a serious right. uh, as well. But um, no, I... I <laughs> I, I mean, I think it's no more complicated than we, we, they just weren't paying attention, you know. And I, I it's, I, I think they thought they had it, <laughs> and they just stopped trying. Right, like we're on the right yeah. path here. Let's just let it run its course. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the notion that you're going to put Windows on a twice yearly mm-hmm. upgrade cycle, right? Double that of iOS and Android, is ludicrous. If you if you said this to to either anyone uh, you know who knows anything about Windows over the past ten years at any point in time that you would have been laughed at, you know it's it's ludicrous, you know, um, and then they kind of did it, <laughs> and I don't know. I guess it's po- I mean obviously we know from patch patch Tuesday has been a thing for a long long time. Um, mm-hmm. You can patch Windows every month, right? That's that's worked. I mean they've had issues with that too, but you know I think people lose sight. I say this a lot. Um, one of the one of the weird things, the subtle differences um, with Windows 10 is that there's not going to be a Windows 11, so we're just going to be on Windows 10, and an update is an update is an update, and that's not true. These, uh, this October update, the April update, these are full new versions of Windows. This is like going to Windows 11. Um, yeah, true. This year we installed Windows 11 and Windows 12, and both of them went really poorly, but mm. That's kind of what did happen every three years, right? There was always some segment of the population that had a problem. Yeah. Um, it's because it's that same kind of, it's an upgrade. It's a version upgrade. It's a new version of Windows. Mm-hmm. The one one thing they did right, and I was very happy to see them call this out, was they reset the shot clock, basically. So instead of support yeah. counting down from October 2nd, it now counts down from November 13th. Sure, um, sure. We were, we were wondering if they would do that. They could have, they technically could have said, you know what? We did start rolling it out October 2nd. And we're sticking to oh, that. Yeah. Yep. It's yep, just one could've. of those small things, but I was like, okay, that's good. They did that. That, that was good. Both for it's server right thing to, but here's, and for client. Uh, look, I talked about this last week or the week before the week. I've been mean, talking about this for weeks. Ever since this happened, they, they released this thing on October 3rd. I think it was. They pulled it Second. maybe on October 5th or sorry, I don't remember Sixth. the exact days, but. Um, I have this embedded in my head. It's never going to go away. <laughs> um, the time passed a long time ago where they should have been transparent and come out and said, look, this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. It's not a big deal that this thing will be delayed for some amount of weeks. It doesn't really right. impact anybody. We will stretch out the support t- time cycle to whenever we actually re-release mm-hmm. it. Just just being that transparent like a week or two weeks into this or something. Agree. Um, yeah. would have put a completely different face on this. For them to be this silent for basically yeah. almost six weeks and then to come up with this retread of their excuses from two years ago and then not explain what happened. Um, the only good news is what you just said. They, they're, they're doing the right thing with the support life cycle. Good. Mm-hmm. Um, but the very basic problem with Microsoft remains and that is that this company as a, a giant organization, but especially Windows, just cannot communicate effectively and it's really getting aggravating it, it's it is that repeat offender thing i mean it just keeps happening and happening and i don't understand mm. we could have been told everything we were just told four weeks ago no you know I, and we we did wonder about this a couple of weeks ago we we're like why aren't they saying anything and i agree uh, just even a short blog post going hey i know some yep. of you are wondering where this is we're still doing testing you know it's but it's coming yeah probably on Patch Tuesday, maybe not, um, that that would have been helpful. Did they say anything about how this may or may not impact the release of 19H1 or whatever it's called or the one mm-hmm. after that? They, they didn't talk about that. No. And my guess is it's not going to because yeah. they're they're going full steam ahead right now with 19H1. <laughs> In fact, yeah, a new bill came out today that we're going to talk about in a bit. And mm-hmm. at the end, it talks about the bug bash for this thing, which is January. So I'm like, yeah, it's going to come out in the spring, just like it's supposed to. It's the same yeah. schedule as before. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So yeah, you did very well, Paul. I didn't have to gong you so far. 
I have actually ground my teeth to small nubs. Um, but thank you. It sounds vaguely sedated, to be honest with you. He does. I, I'm wondering <laughs> yes. what's in that cup. This he's is full of rum. Of. <laughs> sounds like maybe, I don't know, maybe he... Uh, I'm the best kind of drunk, Leo. I just fall asleep. <laughs> maybe he just, you know? he's just like, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to get you angry, though, because that's my job. It is. Um, a, I don't think that most, of the, most people who don't listen to Windows Weekly even knew that any of this happened. Agree. Uh, yeah. Now, I admit 1,500 or whoever it was, people who suffered data deletion are probably really not happy and and mm -hmm. under, understandably so and probably microsoft should slow down the cadence or something maybe maybe just uh, you say slow down i thought you meant one update a year they don't need to do two a year nobody's making them do two right. a year i know a two a year, year is, yeah. has always been insane to me in fact yeah. i would love to see the rationale for that you know at some point they decided that was the right number i wonder where that comes from no business got bit by this because they don't they're not seekers that's for sure um so so what's the and problem? i think it's appropriate for microsoft to be judicious in their public announcements not for not merely for legal reasons i suppose legal reasons might be one of them mm -hmm. but but just because mm -hmm. they want to just get it right and i think um yeah but that would have been something you could have communicated in mid-october well, or you know, they could even the, communicate it, now and say, look, we want to get this right. So, you know, yeah. we're going to work on it. We know we need to work on it. We apologize. Well, uh, Did they apologize? That would have been maybe really. appropriate. Not really. So an apology would be okay. Yeah, um, yeah, Leo mentioned that, um, like, let's say everyone out in the real world was unaware that this was No one knew happen. this happened. Yeah, you know what, I you know what more people knew happened? Because I got a lot of calls on the radio show. The activation server breaking last week. And... That, and bothered they people. didn't even mention that yeah they that, didn't even yeah. mention that that really <laughs> bothered people because but hold on i just want to let's i just want to complete that last thing first before we get to that um you know there are uh 10 million ish people in the windows insider program um, yeah right uh, that shows a a pretty big enthusiast base out there um yes yeah, a lot that would have been the people, you know, if Microsoft had come out with a blog post um, to the Windows Experience blog and, uh, you know, on October 10th, 2018, the whole world would not have read that, just like the whole world wouldn't have known anything about this problem. But the people who would have read it would have been all the insiders who are wondering why the frick that Microsoft doesn't pay attention when they report bugs and then they just ship the product publicly yeah. that has those bugs. It, it just would have been a credible thing to do that wouldn't have harmed them in any way. Uh, that could have been ignored by the wider world. And it would have just sent the message that, hey, we actually do care. We're paying attention. And this community is, in fact, important to us. You're not, you're not just replacing the paid testers that we used to have who we fired because we have you now. You know, th th there's there's all kinds of way you can, uh, me you know, a message is the right, I hate saying, talking like that. But I mean, th th that you can present a message to the world or whatever. Um, being silent is not the correct Mm. solution at not when there's a problem hanging out in the world right and you're you know you're the platform maker uh you mary joe talked about github how many people out in the world know that something github whatever whatever it even is nobody cares mm. but the audience for this thing has got to be just as big as that and microsoft is a company full of engineers this was an engineering problem a process problem it still needs to be communicated you know what this reminds me of <laughs> Not to bring bring up old wounds and bad blood, but remember when Stephen Sanofsky was still running Windows and there was a time when he wouldn't say how they were going to support XAML or if they were going to support XAML and developers were flipping out. Do you remember this? Not and exactly, he just, but that's he very just was kind of like, yeah. it's it doesn't matter. Like this is this isn't germane. And all the developers were like, Yeah, this is huge and we need to know. It matters and, to us. Yeah. Yep. Right. And this, I feel like this is like that. It's like not everybody needed to know, but the people who wanted and needed to know should have known something. Like people kept coming to us and saying, you guys must know when, when 1809 is going to be re-released, re right? No, right. we didn't know. I mean, I guess. No, they were literally today, silent but. about this the entire time. There is, they yeah. never communicated publicly. And well, they had the one thing we, you know, we, they said they paused the update, um, Whenever that was, the end of that week, first week of October. October but, um, 6th, yep. 
Yeah. It just, uh, she's, you know, this is a double, you know, Microsoft has obviously given both of us a great career and we appreciate the fact that they can't communicate on one level, but I also find it to be incredibly irresponsible and unprofessional when they do stuff like this. Mm. It, it, it's, it, it's crazy. Mm. I, it just makes no sense. They have, do you have any idea how big between marketing and communications and whatever internal and external Microsoft, it's an army of people. You know, not a yeah. peep. It's just, I, I, seriously, the consensus was let's just shut up and maybe no one will notice. It's crazy. <sighs> yeah. But it's out, guys. 1809, it's coming your way. I'd be really nervous about installing it. <laughs> Me to <be> too. <laughs> and I'm waiting a little bit. Well, uh, in the good news department, like I said, I installed this thing on all my computers months ago and it's fine, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I didn't, you didn't have data hit loss those edge cases right? that triggered yeah. the data loss. You know, I mm -hmm. no, I'm the same. I it's on all my systems. That's fine. Yeah. I will say one. Here's a weird little one, and I don't know if this is really related to 1809, but I got the uh, new MacBook Air when 1809 was finally released. It's available now. If you if you Google search download Windows 10 ISO, you'll go to the official Microsoft page. It's there now. So the ISO you download is 1809, and I wanted to test. Uh, boot camp on the new device because I know my Apple has updated that since you know my old machine and it's different now and um, it fails every time I try to make it work and it fails because of something with the ISO the, the error message says it can't do something with that file but what the Mac has done is it's it's partitioned the disk right so you it actually creates two more partitions but let's just say it splits it into two one for the Mac one for Windows um, and then when it fails, it says, well, we're going to go back and get rid of those partitions. But it never ends and it never gets rid of them. And then you have to use a combination of like the terminal and the, um, or the whatever the command line is called. I guess it's the terminal. And uh, the disk utility because it creates these weird, I don't understand the Mac that well. So it's like there, there are containers and then there are disks inside of them. And you can only erase one from the GUI. You have to use the command line. It's, it's, it's a horrific process to get rid of those things and go back to one partition. And you have to do it that way because if you try to run boot camp to make the partitions and the partitions are already there, it won't work. It, won't work. it has to have one partition before it will do anything. And uh, this could be Apple. I mean, I'm, you know, I want to be clear, I have no idea. But uh, after the show, I'm going to go uh, grab I have 1803 over on a file server and um, I'll try it with 1803. Wouldn't that be interesting, right? <laughs> if 1803 actually worked. Now, could be because 1802 is literally brand new. The MacBook is brand new. Apple hasn't updated their boot camp software to support. I, I have no idea. But it is kind of an interesting coincidence that that doesn't work. Mm. And then I keep screwing up my Mac. Thanks. <laughs> I think that's probably not a high priority at this point. <laughs> yeah, for anybody. Yeah, yeah. no, I know. <laughs> it's a high priority for me. <laughs> but yeah. yes. That's what yeah. you get for running a Mac. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. Wow, where's my gong? Yeah. <laughs> what do I have? <laughs> a little one of those little party tuner things. You I, need do I get one. anything? A deflate balloon sound. Need a maybe? whoopee cushion. <laughs> <laughs> How about a fat tire bike? You want that? <laughs> Jeez, look at that thing. I'm going to need that tomorrow. It's going to snow. Is it? Yeah, this is for. We're going to get five yeah. eight inches of snow tomorrow. It's here too. Weather. It's going to snow. Yeah. This is uh, Lisa's new bicycle. She's learning to ride a unicycle. Here you go, John. I was say, you might want to get the rest of it. <laughs> okay, guys, this is important. Mm -hmm. Look on Twitter right now. Mike Yabara okay. is watching us live. Hi, Mike. The corporate VP of Xbox, and he just said on Twitter, good criticism on the communications. I certainly hear you there. He's he's listening to us talk about nice. what they did wrong. What they we're not cr yeah, criticizing him. We're about, hey, we have Xbox oh, no, coming no, later. No, not at all. <laughs> That's later. Okay. Uh, I'm surprised, actually, uh, Paul showed There's up. There's going to be a ton of Fallout 76 later. day. Uh -huh. yeah. I'm installing right now. That's why, that's why I've got to, the uh, gong also. When I saw how much Xbox. And I, said, I see that Fallout 76 is out, so I'll talk to you after Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually uh, I'm bringing home... Because there's no cross-play, unfortunately, Xbox to PC. And my son has been playing the beta with his friend, and they said I could be on their team. So I'm bringing home... We need my... a character we think of as Skippy. 
<laughs> yeah, you know he's going to make me the dog. Kind of a... Like, <laughs> I'll be the tagline. The tagline. Guy. Yeah. Hey, hey, you guys going on a raid? Can, can, can I go? Can I join? Huh? 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 Yeah. You, you, the mascot. You, you could be the healer. You just stay back a little bit. Um. Okay. Okay. Um. So that's nice. So somebody at Microsoft's listening. Chris Capicella will be hearing us later. We're running off the road. And um. <laughs> what would you What would you say to uh, well, is it, is it really Chris's job? What would you say to whoever's job it is that would be I, the I better way to handle more this? More localized than that. I, I, I can't imagine. Well, who knows? I'm sure there was some conversation at the sea level. But I mean, this is this is just a, a Windows. This has always been a Windows problem. There's a lot of Ninja Cat, rah, rah, baloney about nothing. But then something serious like this happens and it's like the cone of silence comes down. You yeah. know, yeah. Um, I'd like to hear I, from the I adults sometimes. That. And I agree with Leo. Like the part I was really, really stunned about was activation issue was not even mentioned in anything. And I saw, you know, I, I thought that was a pretty big deal because on Twitter, people were telling me that they were getting the wrong advice from Microsoft support. They were call, they were waiting in for like ever on the phone line when so, they saw their copies were deactivated. <laughs> yeah, but just to, to so that was a weird problem. That's never happened it was. before to my knowledge. When you see that error, that indicates that you right. have pirated Windows, <laughs> usually. It does. It's um, not a good feeling. The other thing is, yeah. you know, no. So the fact that they were getting bad advice from some support rep and, you know, wherever they are, uh, maybe it doesn't surprise me that much. But I, the thing I would say to this is they did fix it really quick, you know? They did, um, but... So, Maybe because it was an easy thing to fix. Plus, I don't. They just kicked the activation know, server and it started up. Yeah, again it's just a, right. I, you know, if I brought was, up a computer and it said, "Hey, your uh, computer's not activated," um, that would be confusing and alarming, and I wouldn't be happy about it. But and the that's the kind is, of thing that bothers normal people. See, that's the my, that's kind of my point, which is the normal, well, people more much more upset about that. I don't think they really even. I didn't get any calls about eighteen oh nine. Nobody saying yeah. where is it. Mm -hmm. Nobody's saying I lost data. It was also pro only, though, wasn't it? Um, sort of. I, I heard from some people with Enterprise. I heard some people who I Taro Alhonen, who watches the show and comments a lot. Yeah. He had it happen to him on server. Oh, um, the other thing I would point out is like the distinction between home and pro is also a mystery to normal people. It is. You get what you get. I noticed one of these Lenovo's has home and one of them has pro. Yeah, I didn't yeah, yeah, particularly yeah. pay attention to which I was getting Windows. Right. So, and, by the way, um, the, the notion of home and pro is something that Microsoft introduced with Windows XP. And uh, the division between the two SKUs or versions or whatever has always been kind of arbitrary and vague. And it's it's kind of gone up mm -hmm. and down and changed over time. And, of course, there's been things like Media Center and S Mode. And, you know, it's gotten really messy. Yeah. But um, this year, that's something I think I feel like they've kind of gotten it to a place where it kind of makes sense now. And and mm -hmm. home is not the disaster maybe it, it had been in certain years, especially like Windows Vista had. Remember they yeah. had home basic and home uh, premium right. or whatever. Um, but I, I I think the nice thing is most people buying like a five hundred dollar consumer PC they are getting home and most of them probably didn't see this. So right the, right. the real average I, I obviously this happened to some normal people you know but yeah. Um, you know, when you when I hear about this from people, when I hear about it on Twitter, or whatever, people are like, "Well, I, you know, I tried my uh, KMS server to see what was going on, right. and I did. You know, they've they've got like these trouble scooting, uh, shooting shooting yeah. skills that, yeah. you know, normal Although, people would. Yeah. Maybe I heard yeah. from normals because I'm more of a normal yeah. user because people mm -hmm. were pinging me and they said, "Hey, I was running Pro and now it's telling me I should downgrade to Home, so I did." Oh boy! Oh, they did. Oh yeah. boy! No, and one guy I talked to actually went and bought a new licensing yeah, key, paid that, like three hundred dollars for it. That's the person I talked to too. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's so sad. I'm like, oh, this is a big mess, right? That's a and mess. Nothing. No, uh, no mention from Microsoft about what happened, right? I think so, they may have said something happened with our licensing servers, just like something happened, mm -hmm. right? But sure. what and how so and is it going to happen it. again? They went from <laughs> Linux to FreeBSD or something. <laughs> and normal people aren't seekers, so a lot of them didn't get 1809 and didn't know 1809 existed unless, you know, I talked about it on the radio show, but uh, but uh, I, I don't know, you know if what, people go, in, oh, golly, what do I do? Uh, the, and, the seeker thing was always the wrong approach. And so th this example was kind of extreme, but this is something we had talked about with previous releases. You know, 
Um, I, I do feel that there are older people or um, less technical people who, over years of computer uh, PC use, like we call Windows use, had developed these routines. Right. You know, and mm -hmm. back in the day, they I would, always uh, check run, updates. Yeah, I'm an older well, they, person. Well, you know, they would check for updates. They would uh, make sure their virus software was up to date. They might yep. do a disk scan or yep. like a. Remember, we used to defrag the disk and watch the thing yep. fill out you know, the screen. Mm -hmm. I always enjoyed that. Um, yeah. They should yeah, have a but fake I mean, I, defrag but I, thing that does that just for... And they have like a CC cleaner type thing they run from time to time or whatever yeah. it might be. Yeah. I think people develop these rituals because they've been trained that uh, Windows PCs are not very reliable. They fall apart all the time. They have to keep ahead of this stuff. They don't want to be scammed. I mean, these people are probably the ones who, you know, would succumb to some kind of a phishing scam or an actual terrible malware or whatever, you know, more often than not. But... I, I always felt like it was a mistake. I, I think people knee jerk mm -hmm. people. I mean, like real normal people. Some of them go to Windows Update. They you know check for updates. The little Windows Defender thing comes up. And they feel good about themselves. Yes. Um, so people are you gotta seeking. be careful. Yeah. Yeah, you got to be careful. For, they don't think they're not. That really seeker seeking. thing is a mistake. They're not. They're just checking. I think updates. that should go away. That should go that should away. Go That's away. a mistake. Right? And I think they actually change it. With you this, may get the worst. You may actually get the worst people to update, which is the exactly yeah. what the people Paul just described. Mm -hmm. Those right. that's Normal the worst people. person. Those poor people. Yeah. 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 You should have a button that says Are Now come sure? on, I really really <laughs> want the latest. Come you should on. never install a major new version of Windows without clicking something. I think of like yeah. think of the way like uh, Leo knows this but Mary Jo never uses a Mac. But one of the things that Apple does uh, it's on the Mac, it's on iOS devices. I actually find it a little annoying, but you there'll be a page, it's like a Eula and you say I agree and then this thing slides down. And you say, I, I agree. agree. And, you, and you have to do it again. You have <laughs> yeah. to be explicit. Yeah. And as annoying as that is, that's what these things need. I don't think every update. I mean, but these feature updates, yeah. just, you know, hey, guys, just so we're clear, this is a big thing. This is, it's important. It's, you know, do, have, are you backed up? You know, it, it should do something so like that. If the lawyers said to them, which they may have, you can't say we made a mistake. That opens right. us to liability. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. What should the communication, how should the communication read? All right. So back on October 10th or 12th or 15th, they should have said, we have discovered an error and you know, whatever it was, it was the day of the last thing. Uh, as a result, we're pausing this thing. Our plan is to get this out to you as soon as possible. But we want to remind everyone that th it doesn't actually matter <laughs> when it comes out. It's not a big deal. And by the way, we're going to push that support window out. To the date of yeah. whenever we do that release it, so no one it. has anything to worry about. Yeah. Just yeah. It, you know, it's you provide the information you you have, and the information that people need to hear. Not what yeah. the hell are they doing? How many weeks in a row? Five, six weeks in a row? We were like, what the hell are they doing? Every right. Wednesday we come on the show. What the hell are they doing? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it's. I mean, I, I don't want to anger you, but also as journalists. We want yeah. we we require and ask more information of Microsoft probably than a normal True. person does. We want to know more what's going on. Than uh, but I think that no, well, hold on. I don't think that's okay. I'm just I'm sorry. I I'm not going to tell this story here. I told it on a different podcast. But I had this uh, the short version is we were flying to Paris last month. The flight was delayed, but it still said it was on time on the board. And I know from flying a lot that all these things have to happen before we're going to go on this plane. And I kept saying to my wife, this thing, we're not leaving yeah. for 45 mm -hmm. minutes, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I finally went up and I, I'm the guy who, you know, I'm that guy. I walk up and said, could you kindly tell everyone in this room, or could you tell us what's going on? And she said, well, blah, blah, blah. And I said, no, I know that. But there are 275 <laughs> people waiting to get on this plane <laughs> to go to France. It's midnight. Yeah. Your board says it's on time. I mean, can yeah. you communicate? Just put it know? up there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, she actually kind of said something snide to me, like, oh, oh. And I'm like, honey, <laughs> pick up the microphone and tell them. Just yeah, tell them. That's all. It's not about me being a jerk. Yeah. It's about. No, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> then Paul grabs and, the microphone out of her hand and he's like, hey, guys, yeah, here's what's Attention, going on. flight 275. <laughs> here's what's happening. First of all, these so people you know, are idiots. These people are idiots. No, you know, it, it's it, it's not that I we think, want to know more information. It's no. that we need to. We are we in get, a place we to get communicate asked. it. Yeah. We get asked a lot. Yeah. We every this, we have an audience that wants to know. Right. And I think in the I, corporate world, there is some uh, 
strain of thought that the less you say, the better. If you yeah, say right. something, it just uh, causes people right. to pay attention to it. No, but there, that is there's a, but this is my point. There is a, there's a thing you can say. In other words, folks, we know the plane's late. We're sorry. The plane just arrived. It's late. We're going to do this as quickly as we can. We don't have an ETA right now, but these are the things that have to happen. You can say something without legally exposing yourself. You know, all you're doing is just explaining. It's, it's the right thing to do for the audience. You know, those yeah, people I, paid hundreds you. of dollars to be on a plane. Yeah. These people did pay for Windows or for a PC, and they're they're just they're enthusiastic. They they're participating in the Windows Insider program, whatever it might be. Yeah, there there is information you can give them, and and then it's fine. Think about how fine it would have been if they had just done what I said they should have done. Yeah, right. It still would have been like, oh, it's kind of weird how long it's taking. That would have been weird, yeah. but yeah. they waited till the next patch. They couldn't make the October patch Tuesday. They released it early, stupidly. Um, so they waited until November. I mean, okay. It's not here's a big a, deal. Here's still. another thing I'm always exp having to explain to people is that, because I say all the time, you have to do your updates. You have to do your updates. You have to do your updates. <laughs> yes. Is the difference between a feature update and a critical yes. update. Mm. And yes. that partly, that also muddies the waters a little bit. because. It does. You know, you don't need, just for people who don't know, you don't need a feature update. You do need a critical update. When we say do your updates, we mean the critical updates. We don't mean the feature updates. The you problem is a lot a lot of the individuals, a lot of the, the average Joes who need that advice are running Windows 10 Home and they don't have a they choice. They can't defer. Yeah. It's, it's just going to happen. This, yeah. uh, the, I, <laughs> this is broken record. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying not to get excited yeah. about this. But th this is another thing with Windows. It's just not right, you know. Um, you know, the Windows Insider program today will put uh, features into builds and only give them to some people now. Right. Guys, we have explicitly said we want to test out the new features. That's what this audience does. You know, if you don't, uh, I, I get, handing an OS upgrade to hundreds of millions of users, tens of millions, whatever the number is, and not giving them any chance, not even giving them an alert like we were talking about earlier to say, hey, by the way, super mm -hmm. serious. It's irresponsible. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. It's an interesting, interesting um, issue. It is. Yeah. I wish it was not an issue we had to discuss. Yeah. True. <laughs> We've spent a lot of time discussing it over the past five weeks. <laughs> well, I can say one thing. You've always done it <laughs> grammatically. <coughs> That's done it, I'm sorry. Done it what? Grammatically. <laughs> And, <laughs> grammatically <laughs> grammatically if there's okay. one thing paul and mary joe are <coughs> it's oh, this grammatic. is going to be an awesome segue <laughs> <laughs> but for those of us who are not paul and mary joe there's grammarly how about that that you was like good that? yeah i by the way i use and rely on grammarly yep. i love grammarly it was funny because uh, i think you brought that up a couple of weeks ago and uh they had not yet become a sponsor so oh i see it was great i was thrilled uh grammarly yeah, no, it's, is it's Legit. It's more than spell checking. It does do spell checking, by the way. I think you know people say, "Oh, well, there's a spell checker and there's Grammarly." It does do spell checking, but really very good. Because in a way, Grammarly is uh, because of its nature more context aware. It's aware of what you're writing, uh, and so that makes it much better as spell checking. It's really a communication tool. It helps you improve your writing, so your writing will be mistake free, but also clear and effective. There's a browser extension. There's a desktop editor on iOS. You get a mobile uh, uh, Grammarly keyboard. They do have a free product, and that'll review critical spelling and grammar errors. But I think you want to look at, if you really write a lot, you want to look at Grammarly Premium. It looks out for spelling and grammar errors, but also advanced punctuation. So, you know, do you know when to use a semicolon versus an M dash? Do you know when an N dash is better than an M dash, or why do you use an M? structure style within context they will actually replace suggested uh, stephen king tweeted the other day would please people please stop the using the word amazing just stop yeah. it just stop it uh grammarly will say they'll see amazing and grammarly say well you know you might want to try astonishing this time <laughs> uh it'll it'll review for conciseness readability and not just readability but de it'll depending on the occasion so obviously an academic essay can have a higher grade level than um, a casual blog post right or a business proposal it knows it understands and it helps you 
get your ideas across more clearly. That's why we use Grammarly here at Twit. Lisa loves it. Sometimes Lisa, because she's very businesslike, will write an email. It's very to me. I like it. It's very straight and to the point. But Grammarly might say you might want to just soften that a little. Literally, it does is put please in there. You know, just and she really appreciates that. It it reminds her about you know this is a business communication. This is the, you might want to try it this way. You will write more confidently at school, at work, even on your mobile device. And I mean things like you could when you're doing a resume it will help you write your resume so you get more callbacks. When you're posting items for sale online, it'll help you write that listing so you'll get more customers. It's that specific, that good. You're gonna love it. And right now you get twenty percent off Grammarly Premium. You can try it for free if you want. Grammarly.com slash windows for twenty percent off a premium account. I would I love I use the premium because it, it gives you so much more capability. That reading level thing is very valuable to me. Really love that. And the suggested, you know, alternative ways you might express something. Grammar, it's not just grammar. It's clarity. Grammarly, G-R, two A's. There's no E in grammar. You knew that. G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y. G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash windows. 20% off right now. Paul uses it. That's why his yep. communications are crystalline. Microsoft should try using Grammarly. Maybe that's the problem. Uh, I see you're trying to apologize for a mistake. <laughs> Perhaps I could help. <laughs> yes. Right. I see you have upset tens of millions of people. Maybe. I see you have Maybe a data try this. showstopper. Have you ever thought of? Mm -hmm. All right. We're going to. You didn't have to gong. No gonging was involved. I, here. I did not. I'm impressed. Well done. You know why? Because he, he got the rant out with Sam's earlier. <laughs> yeah. I think it was good well, he let me introduce the topic. I yeah, think, no, in, I, I, I think in what they tell me in what the tech I haven't heard it yet that you were maybe a little more vociferous, if I may use it. It's a. possible. It's possible. I, I don't remember <laughs> yesterday, Leo. Um, <laughs> you blacked out, and uh, yep. we're very upset. It's been a, there the wounds been were fresh yesterday. Yesterday it was tough. It was still it was fresh wounds. Day one. Yeah, day one. Day one. <laughs> America held hostage. <laughs> Let's talk about Windows Server. Right. See, if this happened this in one. Windows Server, this would be a big deal. Well, it did. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. I mean, they go. pulled Windows Server 2019 and Windows Server 1809 when this data loss bug happened. They pulled everything. Did it happen to people time. on server? Because that would be kind of bad. You know, I didn't hear of anyone it happened to on server. I think they did this as a precaution more than caution, anything. Yes. Um, yep. But yes, they started re-releasing server yesterday, as I mentioned. So it's on the Volume Licensing Service Center. It's on the Azure Marketplace if you want the Windows Server 2019 image. It's soon going to be in the Eval Center. I'm not exactly sure when it's going to be on Visual Studio um, and a couple other por uh, portals, but should be, I would think, this month. Um, so it's coming out. And to me, the reason server was important is, number one, it's server. So it's a it's more mission critical to some um, than not, not in every case, but to more mission critical to some than client can be. But also Microsoft released exchange server 2019 at the end of October exchange server 2019 required windows server 2019. So even though it was out, if you had, if you weren't one of the people who happened to get windows server 2019 in those few days before Microsoft pulled it, you couldn't even run exchange server 2019 until to, uh, yesterday. Uh, anything else to say about server? No, that's about it. Um, server also has been fixed if it uh, to, to the extent it needed fixing so it won't suffer from any of these problems that uh, impact a client. Jolly good. Yes. Um, now Let me we check all... my blood pressure right now to see if this um, yeah. you feeling better? <laughs> has had a bad effect. <clears throat> How about I'm doing okay? <laughs> <laughs> doing okay over there? Yeah. What is, I don't know. I'm pushing the wrong rope. Okay, there we go. Got the right lower third. That's Paul on the left. <laughs> How yes. about light mode? I've heard of dark mode. People talk a lot about dark mode. Not everybody right. talks about light mode. Yeah. That's because no one you know, has a light a mode. Thing. Though. I know. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> what is light mode? Um. 
so there there was a white mode right for windows before mm-hmm. but it still had some elements in black so things like the search box um and other parts of the operating system would still be black even if you pick the lighter mode so now what they're doing is they're going to do a, a fully light themed version of windows 10. so if you look at the um screenshot there that i think paul and i both have embedded in our posts you see like the bottom bar uh Taskbar is white or light colored, like kind of a lightish blue. And this, there's a new Windows wallpaper there reflecting the light theme, if you like that. So, yeah, it's pretty. I can see this, unlike Fluent. I can see the difference. There you it can is. See this Truthfully, one. I prefer this to dark mode, which I find depressing. A lot of people so are I, like, oh, I didn't even know yeah. I would, but I do. Yeah. I like the light mode. <laughs> it's really bright, though. Um, Oh. I put the I the, I just threw the wallpaper on this computer earlier and it's you know it's like it's you know it is bright. <laughs> is uh, this in personalize? Yeah. Is that where I'd go to get it? Well, this is not a bit. This is only in the um, uh, the Windows Insider, Insider build, build. For the next version yep. that just came out today. Right, so this is like H1. the very first. Oh, I've learned never to do Insider mode. That's yeah. just crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, so you don't you can't get it yet if you're not an insider, but it's it it's looks part of the a lot cleaner than uh, the dark mode thing they did for sure. Mm-hmm. Like this looks, it already looks more professional. You know, whatever. I assume they're going to keep the standard mode, whatever. You know, then yeah, maybe they could call it whatever. It's so funny. People, everybody Mixed. was excited about dark mode on OS ten. <laughs> People go nuts over that. Crazy. And I did it for well, a while. Well, it's just too grim. I want I want oh, normal so I mode. mode. I I actually kind of need it. You, oh, because you're doing um, editing. There's just something I, I find it to be less harsh Jarring on my something. eyes. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the other. Yeah, you know, people. When we designed our website and we had a dared to have a white background, people were very upset. Yeah, jerks. Mm. Jerks is so nice. <laughs> we get asked about eyes. having a dark mode on our website all the time. Yeah. Oh, really? I don't, I don't, I, yeah. It's but we don't like our users, so screw those guys. It's no, we. Right. It's it's you know it's something we want to do for oh, sure. But it's what happens when you don't get out much. <laughs> oh, so bright, <laughs> so bright. Right. Burns. I don't. All these things they've done to computers in recent years. You know, they have night mode, and they have this on mm-hmm. phones and so forth. Um, uh, you know, where it kind of uh, eliminates a lot of the blue light from the display, so it's kind of yeah, orangey that's looking. Night shift. Yeah. That's night the, shift. Sorry. Yeah. Um, I I like that kind of thing. Like I I can yeah. really feel the difference in my in yeah. my eyes or no, on my eyes, whatever. Right. Yeah. Uh, hmm. So they did this dark thing mode I, it on looks mobile because OLEDs uh, use energy, if right. you, you know. So it was really, and then it just migrated. Oh, that was its, the thing with Windows, uh, Windows Phone, right? It yeah. was uh, mm-hmm. not just a black background, and by default, that was all they had in the beginning. Uh, but there was lots of it wasn't white space because it was black, but there was lots of empty yeah. space, yeah. and that contributed to battery life because and people hated it because it's like how come the icons mm-hmm. aren't over there or the tiles right. or whatever and. But it was, yeah, it was better for the display and it was better for your eyes. Better for battery. Yeah. Okay. I think we've done dark mode uh, and light mode. To death. To death. <laughs> how about... To death. How about the good news that 1809 will support Windows 10 on ARM? Oh, that's exciting. Well, so... <laughs> Um, I, I think it was Brad actually who uncovered this story, but uh, he had talked to a couple of PC makers, and um, what they were telling him was that we have we just shipped these new computers running Windows on ARM, right? Uh, Lenovo and what's the other company that released one of these things? I can't remember, Acer? but they released these. Acer, who was it? Acer, Acer, Acer's, 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 one of those. Acer's. Yeah. Um, and then Microsoft pulled it, but because that's the only system that these computers come with, the system was unsupported. And so Microsoft had, you know, you couldn't put 18.03 on this ver- on this uh, processor chips of the, uh, the 950. Mm-hmm. 850, sorry. 950 was a Lumia. Anyway, um, <laughs> they, they had gone to uh, Microsoft saying, what, you know, what do we do now? I mean, we're not getting updates to these machines. Like it's, it's, it's like out of support. And uh, Microsoft wasn't giving them any information either, by the way. So if you think it's just a communication problem publicly, it's not. And um, Microsoft later went back and they they changed the page, the support page, and they 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 just added the Snapdragon 850 chipset to the support table for 1803, as if to suggest 
everything was fine, but it didn't change the fact that these things, you know, came out of the gate with uh, 1809. So, yeah, a little bit of, just a little bit of humor there. Uh, you know, I think in the, if the 1809 thing had, it, this might have been a slightly more outrageous problem. I think now we're just like, yeah, like whatever. <laughs> you know, it's just like this weird <laughs> collateral damage over in the corner. Who cares? Probably impacted about three people. It's okay. Um, applic activation issue. We already did that, yeah. so we don't need we to do that. We already did that one. Yeah, we're done with that. Amazon's one. Echo Voice Services. I thought I was going to write about this, right? So, uh, Amazon has deals with various PC makers where this thing is installed by default on those computers, and now the Alexa app is available in the wind or the Microsoft Store, rather. Mm -hmm. For Windows 10, so I thought this is cool. I'll give this a shot, you know. And I got to say, it's it's um, it's really bare bones. Um, yeah, I don't, uh, you know, it's like yeah, whatever. I just don't. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't even so so far support video, um, Spotify, Pandora. Like, there's tons of things missing, right? Yep. Yeah, it's it's you very. You can't basic. control your jokes. Windows. You can't control Windows with it, like the Windows commands. You can't use that, even though it's on your PC. Yep. Doesn't do much. Let's no. see what it says. Is it on this one? I forget which computer I put it on. It might have been. No, it was a different one. Um, yeah, I think I put it on the knock. But uh, yeah, I can find out how much snow I'm going to get tomorrow. That's pretty much all it's good for. <laughs> Though they say, Amazon says they're going to add a lot more. And you can you can access some, I, I don't know if it's all, but some of the um, skills the that Cortana have been written for. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but... Yeah. It's basic. Got an email from a friend of mine this morning. Mm -hmm. Guy you may know. He's wild. He's crazy. He mm -hmm. uh, he said, why I can't... He's wild. He's, crazy. he's wild. <laughs> does he own a Surface device, Leo? I think I know who you're talking about. He does. <laughs> but he says, why... Uh, what happened to all the LTE? He wants a mobile yeah. phone interface. You know, he wants cellular data. Mm -hmm. Yep. And he said, I can't and find it. he wants one. it on a real computer. He, well, he wanted it on a Dell. Yeah. And I said, you know, they, the only one I can see is the latitude, which no one wants. It's right. a business, you know, it's a kind of a bulky business device. Uh, but I said, so for a while, that uh -huh. was, nobody was making them uh, anymore. But I think that that's changed, and I'm not sure why. Well, it changed because last year, Microsoft started something called the Always Connected PC Initiative. And it encompasses both ARM and Intel-based chipsets. Um, it's still a, a small fraction of available computers. And for some reason... It often seems to be like the inexpensive computers. You know, I have it on the... Yeah, which is dopey. Uh, two versions of the HP NVX2. Yeah, it has um, it. yeah. You can get LTE in uh, ThinkPad X1. Um, I'm not sure if it's all of them, but at least in the Carbon, probably... I bet it's across the board. The next one, I sent him a couple of links. You know what has it is the nice... Mm -hmm. That would be that, that leather HP. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Folio. Yeah. But right, also right. the X, the Carbon X1, which I think would be a very good mm -hmm. choice. And like, um, uh, the HP Folio has uh, the same chipset family as the MacBook Air. Right, the Y. So that's yeah. got, it's, well, it's not just the Y series, but it's from the same family of Y series. So hmm. I believe those are the only two out in the wild uh, that oh, are of that okay. type. Mm -hmm. That might be an interesting comparison. But Surface um, has I, a number of LTE choices, though. Don't they? A couple. They, they <laughs> have had. I think Surface, the previous Surface, uh, maybe Surface Pro 4 too, was were available eventually in LTE. Mm -hmm. um, they just announced the uh, Surface Pro Six, but did that is that available no. now in LTE? No. Nope. So he's so not probably wrong. Will there, be. there are fewer and fewer of these. It's but curious. what about the Surface Go, you guys? They just got I said, LTE. I can't tell you how many times I've said that. What about it? What about it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what yep. I was kind of leading up to. Yeah. 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 Although I wouldn't really recommend a Surface Go for most people. Mm. It's like Paul said; it's kind of the low end yeah. stuff. You know, I think it might have to do with the chipset. Are they still doing they the do. Gobi, the Qualcomm Gobi? Remember, that was a big thing. I mm. uh, The Surface Go, I'm not sure, but I, I would be shocked if it wasn't a, an Intel part. Ah, uh, okay. Because that machine so was they're waiting for they're waiting for Intel to make these integrated SOCs with, with LTE, probably. Oh, well, no, I don't know about that. I mean, a lot of other PC makers probably do use the Qualcomm oh, okay. part. Mm -hmm. um, but Surface Go was kind of like an Intel intervention at the last minute. You know, they, I believe Microsoft was going to go with Qualcomm, and then Intel said, "We can do yeah, that." Please. 
please. Please, we can, we can do that. We can deliver a terrible performance too. Um, I yeah. like my go still, just for, which only for certain cases though, like when I need to carry something really light right? and I want something with a screen bigger than my phone. You know, I'm tired of you treating this like a pair of shoes you can just slap on anytime you're in the mood. You That's know? pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but if you do, if you do yeah. want LTE and you do want it in the go, you can order it now yes. and it'll ship in the U.S. and Canada on November 20th and a whole bunch of other countries November 22nd. And to be Cost fair to Microsoft, uh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say it costs a little more than the ones without built-in LTE. This is you know, 120 bucks more, I think. Right. Yeah. I get uh, it. it know, is the higher Apple's end been doing it, and not in their Macintosh, but in their iPads forever. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and, forever. And I yeah. kind of like it. I got it in the uh, my new iPad Pro because mm -hmm. it's just nice to be always on. It's pretty handy. I, I Honestly, I, I think it's transformative. It's it's one of those things like uh, it's a little bit like multi-touch maybe. You know, I think a lot of people, mm -hmm. like, eh, you know, I can just attach my phone. What's the big deal? Um, the big deal is just the seamless connectivity, literally the always on mm -hmm. nature of it, you know, that. As you move around, you move to Wi-Fi when that's available, and and right. when it's not, you you hit the LT, and it's just it really makes a big difference. It's it in the same way that it makes a big difference on your phone. I mean, imagine if your phone was only Wi-Fi and you were kind of running around, trying to, you know, trying to figure out you couldn't make a phone call until you got on mm -hmm. Wi-Fi or whatever. Yeah. Um, I I think it's a big deal. I mean, I, I'm surprised this. I'm surprised Apple doesn't put it in all their Macs. Uh, Mac, you know, the they don't put it in any Macs. Uh, yeah, I. Hmm. I, I it's bizarre to me. But, Although um, what they do is there is a, a very automatic handoff between yeah. if you have an iPhone. Apple assumes that, well, if you've got a Mac, you've got an iPhone, an Apple Watch, sure. an iMac. <clears throat> you've got everything. Well, iPad. Apple didn't have a uh, like a biometric login forever. And the idea was, well, you can, you can sign it with your Apple Watch. Right. What's wrong with what that? What are you talking about? My Apple Watch? <laughs> like, <what>? <laughs> <laughs> so if you have an Apple Mac, a Macintosh and an iPhone, yeah. it will see the iPhone and it will if if it'll you can have it automatically join. There's nothing to do. It just mm -hmm. goes. Yeah, you, you want to be on on Wi-Fi yeah. well, or on uh, LTE. Yeah, use yeah, your yeah. phone. Yep. And I think that uh, is Google's reasonable if you have a phone. Like uh, yeah. Well. Yep. It <clears throat> yeah. Well, I didn't. I never was a believer in this till I tried it on the MVX too. And then I'm like, wow, it really is totally different. Well, you're in yeah, New York too. I mean, I imagine hard. that you get out and about, and you know, you go out. Yeah. You're, you're seeing shows. You're going she's to the park. Putting on shoes. Going, she's doing the New York thing. Shoes. Going to the, going to the Museum of Modern <laughs> Art. Yeah. Having you know, lunch you know my with your life. friends. You know, you all that diamond encrusted bag she carries. I saw Sex in the exactly. City. I know you guys are always you guys, going out. You know what I'm doing. Yeah. Yep. You know. <laughs> so you. No, but it does make sense so if you're transparent. If you're urban, it does make sense because you do spend more time on mass transit. You do spend more time out and about. Yeah. If you're, uh, you know, a, fr a frontline worker out on the utility poles mm -hmm. or whatever, you're out where there, there's too. no Wi-Fi. There. I mean, it, there's there's all kinds of reasons to have this. Yeah, thing. yeah. Um, I like I, it. I mean, I don't. I love it. What I what I put in is uh, the Google Fi chip. Yes. Is pay as you go. So yes, I, I don't. I'm not paying a monthly fee for, for access to this because I yeah. have a Google Fi phone. Yep. I just yeah, pay. It's part of my phone subscription. Whenever I use mm -hmm. the data, it, it comes out of that. And that's yeah. that's actually to me kind of the best of both worlds, except for the hundred fifty bucks extra you have to pay Apple to get that feature. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, my, Microsoft's charging you one twenty, so yeah. yep. Apple there used must to be do a that. cost uh, to this. Yeah. Well, there's an extra rate. Oh, but there. Apple Apple did the twenty percent thing this year. Like, yeah. This Apple the, used to charge one twenty nine. Now yep. it's one fifty. At this point, it's not so much an Apple tax as it is like an Apple tariff. <laughs> it's a tariff. <laughs> you know? It's a tariff. Because yeah. those of us who lived in the land of Apple mm -hmm. have to really have maintain a balance of trade with the rest of the yeah. world. Yeah. Um, you say, I believe it's you, mm -hmm. it's got your name on it, that mm -hmm. the uh, the new MacBook Air is the best thing that ever happened to the Surface laptop. Yeah. How, so a couple things to Explain that. yourself. Uh, so the, for whatever it's worth, and I mean this honestly, it's going to be a hard thing for Windows guys, but um, the new MacBook Air is great. <laughs> like it's fine and i think as uh like a tech guy who kind of overthinks things and, and looks at specs and worries about this stuff you know the that processor choice that apple made was a real concern but as i've discovered in my own uh real world usage and then also just benchmarking the thing with various tests honestly it's not an issue it, it the machine performs fine and for people who had been waiting for a macbook air upgrade for many years here it is yes it's 200 dollars more expensive than it should be that's apple these days but 
As far as the computer itself, it's wonderful. But on the Microsoft side of the fence, uh, you know, Microsoft had just released Surface Laptop 2 and Surface Pro 6 and then Surface Studio 2 about a month ago. And there was kind of a sense of like, eh, like clearly there are plans for more dramatic upgrades than what they did, but um, they released this thing in the exact same body as its predecessor. It has the same legacy ports and not even a USB-C port. There's a lot of like, kind of like, oh God, really? Like this is the best you could do? Like it comes in black. You know, it's kind of, it was kind of not disappointing, but it just had the, like, I'm glad they put it out, but it had the kind of feel like this was the literal minimum they could do for this product. And now that the MacBook Air has come out, you kind of look at what Apple did and you're like, oh, okay. <laughs> Actually, the Surface Book 2 looks a lot better by comparison all of a sudden, right? Because it's a, it has the better keyboard for sure. It's got a gorgeous screen, great trackpad and all that. The port situation is actually better in the MacBook Air, but that's not enough to make someone buy a Mac. The la Surface laptop is $200 less expensive. And you get a full-speed uh, quad-core, eighth-generation Intel you know, i5 or i7 processor, depending on what you buy. Um, and so I guess what I mean is uh, MacBook Air is a great machine. It's going to satisfy that audience. I don't think it is enough to make people go from Windows to Mac, which, by the way, is something the original, well, the second-generation MacBook Air, the, the one it replaced, had that ability. It was so good, the entire industry copied it. And a lot of people, I bet, left Windows at that time and bought a Mac because that machine was so innovative and, and cool and it was reasonably affordable. Now it's super expensive. And now the thing Microsoft has, this kind of Me Too product, right? It's like obviously an, a, a, a MacBook Air ripoff of sorts. Yeah, but all Ultrabooks well, are. I mean, that's everybody's yeah, been but, doing but, that since but, 2008. But, I mean, I don't know that I've ever seen one that looks this much like a MacBook Air. I mean, this one is like a, it's a MacBook Air with a Microsoft logo on it. Um, and, and, oh, an, and a fuzzy carpet. Yeah, right, because they got to <laughs> differentiate. Um, we can debate the, <laughs> the point of that. But um, I think this makes, for people in the Windows fold, there is something special about Surface Laptop. There always has been. Uh, just like there has always been something special, well, since, you know, the, the Gen 2 MacBook Air. Um, it does have that same certain thing it's kind of hard to express but um and now that you have seen what apple has done you're like oh i mean before these things were the same price so it was kind of like oh this is you know you could make a decision either way it, kind of, it might make sense to go one direction or the other but again i think for people leaning you know, with the windows um bent uh the surface laptop top two suddenly is kind of a if not a no-brainer a, a much better is it value a lot cheaper and I, than, a, than an air it's 200 dollars less expensive okay, okay. Yeah, so for for nine ninety nine, right? It's a Core i five, like a real Core i five, right? Not that core. Y, not that Y. Eight thing. gigs of RAM, yeah. one twenty eight. It's nine ninety nine. It's a three, th you know. No, I'm sorry, that's not the. It's a three by two display. It's not three thousand by two thousand. It's a little lower res than that. But the uh, the pixel um, density is higher actually on Surface Laptop two than it is on the MacBook mm -hmm. Air. But both mm -hmm. screens are beautiful. Um. And, you know, it's just, again, we, we can kind of quibble over, like, ports and stuff. And we, and I and certainly I'll, I'll spend the rest of my life doing that kind of thing. But in real-world use, I don't feel that – I don't think I've ever once been limited by the fact that this thing only has a single USB 3 port on it. Even though I look at that and I say this is a negative. It's kind of a strange thing. But uh, in real life, it's it's fine. It's a great machine. Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. And it has touch. Let me talk a little bit more about 1809, because I, I feel like I didn't express my <laughs> outrage. <laughs> I'm like, which is worse? Are you talking about 1809 or are you talking about Max? I don't know. Tough, tough choice. <laughs> Wait till we get to Xbox, Mary Jo. Wait till Such we get to hater. Xbox. Guys, guys, I hater. still have not wrong, wrong this, but it's ready. <laughs> There's so much Xbox ready. news this week, Mary Jo. There is. Oh. It's like a 30-minute swath of just awesomeness. Oh, oh yeah, no. baby. <laughs> <laughs> you, ought to, you ought to see Fallout 76 on a 100-inch screen, Paul. <laughs> I hear it takes place in uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Is that true? I don't know. Because yeah. I can tell you that Philadelphia today is pretty much a post-apocalyptic <laughs> hellscape. Looks, looks like looks like Philly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Looks like Philly. Yep. So, uh, whiteboard for iOS hasn't been updated in how long? It's just two weeks. It hasn't been that long. But, no, since I think it was this summer was the, uh, uh, where is the story? The first uh, release. Remember, you know, Microsoft had released 
whiteboard for the Surface Hub, and then they eventually put it back to Windows 10 and then also on mobile. And so uh, this is the first, actually, it was this September. It wasn't even that long ago. Uh, this is the first major update to the app. So, uh, and by major, I mean minor, <laughs> actually. But uh, anyway, they're updating it. This is just, this is, it's kind of a minor note. You know, Microsoft also had come out with some interesting, like, <clears throat> well, interesting is maybe stretching it, but some posts about um, how they're using AI across various Office products. So they did one for Word. Uh, Microsoft Word across, you know, desktop, mobile, and and web. And then they did one uh, for Outlook as well. And a lot of this actually has to do with the mobile version of the app, which, you know, depending on who you talk to, is either the greatest thing in the world or, uh, you know, something horrible that is incomplete and needs to be fixed. But, you know, one of the things I really like about the mobile app is they've made, they really changed it since it used to be, it was an accompli or whatever. Um, the different parts of the app are quite different than they used to be. So the three main parts of the app now are, you know, mail calendar and then search. And so they've kind of made search job one in the mobile version of Outlook. And um, they're really improving search across the various um, Outlook clients to support things like top results, which is kind of something you might expect to see on a, um, like a web search engine. But the idea here is that <laughs> it's using AI to understand what the, the type of thing that you are searching for now, but also the type of thing you have searched for in the past. And so it kind of surfaces things um, that are going to be particularly relevant to you. Um, so it's, you know, it's kind of a neat, AI has to be part of everything these days. So, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there it is. It's all in it's, there. Speaking of AI having to be everywhere. <laughs> well, nice segue. Yeah, Ex say, is it pronounced Zoxo? This is, Exo no, I asked, I asked. So Microsoft bought a company today, X-O-X-C-O. -X and the way to pronounce it is X-O-X -X company. Oh, I not get it. love you, company. I know. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, how do you guys pronounce this? Um, so these guys are based in Austin. They are an AI company. Um, they, if you know, if you've ever heard of this um, bot building technology called Howdy AI, they're the company that developed this. It that is something that you can use to build bots on Slack. Oh, um, oh I which get is kind of interesting. Uh, and they is, also sell X. Just Slack. I mean, obviously, Microsoft. Right. No, would have Slack no was the, kind of where they made their name yeah. in this with this thing. Um, but they also do something called Botkit, um, which is some AI development tools for people who are building on GitHub. So it's a pretty good fit with what Microsoft's doing. They've bought a bunch of AI companies this year. They're really building up their AI portfolio, like Paul said, adding AI to everything. Uh, they didn't say what they intend to do with this exactly, but it's not much of a stretch since. The technology lets you do things with bots like schedule meetings and Microsoft has its own bot building tools and bot building kits and skills kits and um, all kinds of bots like Zoe.ai and Showice. They've got a bunch of those. So it's it's a it's a nice fit, I think. And a, presumably this would go into Outlook maybe or? You know, it could go into Outlook. It could, could go into other Office products. Right. Um, maybe even Windows. Wow. Somehow, that'd be interesting. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. These days, it's like add AI and stir, and you've got yeah. Microsoft's <laughs> <Yeah>. strategy. <laughs> Ten percent stock boost automatically. Yep. <laughs> it is really kind of funny how uh, over time certain phrases, not just at Microsoft, but throughout technology, become like they're they're kind of the cool kids right now. Yeah. So everything is like you know. It was blockchain. Yeah. It was. Yep. You know, it's all AI. I wonder what's going to be next. Legos. Notepad. <laughs> Segway. Notepad. Notepad. <laughs> yes, it's going to be Dream Notepad. On. Notepad, the answer to every question, guys. Dream on. Will, lo will Notepad come in light mode and dark mode? <laughs> Ooh, light mode Notepad. I can't, I can't Ooh. take Experts notes. Experts wants to know. Ooh, that would be good. Sticky right. notes, light mode. <laughs> Time to feed the cats, Mary Jo. Yep, I'll be back. Bye. Bye. Oh, is it is it <laughs> Xbox time? It's Xbox time. Woo! No, usually I say something like, I'm going to try to get through this quickly to, to spare Mary Jo, but this time I'm going to take it nice and slow. Go deep, man. Go deep. Go deep. Okay. Now, there's Great. a bunch of stuff. Um, Microsoft had an event in Mexico City last night called X018, I guess. I, um, and it was really just a giant commercial. And um, I find these kind of things fascinating. It was a lot like an E3 presentation, right, where it's just game, 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 game. But the thing that was most interesting about it to me, aside from some of the games, obviously, 
uh, that are coming down the pike was how many of them were Xbox Game Pass games, right? And that, you know, Microsoft, uh, f- who is being defeated right now in the console market, has responded to that in the greatest possible way and has created this truly kind of gamer-centric platform across the board. They do all kinds of things that I think are kind of awesome. And it's neat because, honestly, if the, if the Xbox had done better, I don't think any of this stuff would have happened. You know, it's it's kind of cool how it's evolved in a way that you can kind of find the, uh, you know, the flower in that pile of dung or whatever. But um, the Xbox Game Pass, of course, is the foundational look at what will be the future of gaming for Microsoft, which is a game streaming service that works across heterogeneous devices, right? Not just Xbox devices and not just PCs, but, you know, to your phones and tablets and TVs, you know, other set-top boxes, whatever. And I... I I, I'm not saying that maybe a mainstream uh, audience should go and watch the X018 uh, keynote that's available now on YouTube. But if you're into gaming or Xbox specifically, um, I do recommend watching it and paying attention to the Xbox game part of it. And just as a reminder, you know, this is really this is one of those steps down the road. Like they're um, they're, they're they're kind of setting it up for this home run. I think they're going to have at the end, which is when they're able to stream these games uh, to everybody. And, you know, and you can see the other stuff. Like, think about some of the, like, the things that go into this that, that matter so much, right? Making Xbox Game Pass work on PCs as well. It seems like a small thing, but kind of a big deal. If you can have games that are Xbox Play Anywhere and they're in Xbox Game Pass, why not make them available on Windows? And they do do that. Um, they just announced this week they're going to allow Xbox Game Pass users to pre-download and pre-install games. So that when they they announce, hey, on uh, December 1st, whatever game is going to become available day one for people who want to buy it. But it's also going to become available on Xbox Game Pass. They can install it ahead of time. And when that date comes, it's just available to play. You know, it becomes unlocked and they just go. There's technologies they've had like uh, uh, fast start technology. So when you are downloading the game, it's sort of partially streaming. So you can start playing it immediately. And then things like backward compatibility, which I think actually also plays a big role in this heterogeneous future where uh, games from the Xbox 360, many games, like hundreds of games, and then uh, a handful of games from the original Xbox are available to play on the Xbox One, which is a completely different architecture, especially from the Xbox 360. And I think that work to get things to work on different platforms, uh, to, to use virtual machines, uh, to make that happen and so forth, you know, the Dave Cutler type stuff that he's contributed to Xbox is... Again, foundational to how this thing changes in the future. So I, I find this stuff to be very interesting. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Um, obviously, some great new games coming to this month. To Xbox Game Pass again to kind of focus on this thing. The big one is PUBG. Um, PUBG is actually heading to PlayStation Four. I think on December seventh, and that marks the one year time frame. So, sure enough, it was a one year uh, console exclusive. But if you're an Xbox Game Pass, you'll get that game for free starting this month, and that's really cool. That's very cool. And yeah. The, yeah. Um, also, today Microsoft announced that the November, what they're calling, it's, they change the names of these things every uh, every so often. It's funny, but the the style of the name is a little different. But it's the November Xbox update, which is a system update for Xbox One, which is a, a sort of like the like a feature update. No, it is it is literally a feature update, but it's smaller than the stuff we see on Windows Ten. Um, that has started shipping today, and there's only a handful of I would call them. They're not even that big, but the big new feature this time around is keyboard and mouse support in games, and that's a big deal. So there's only a handful of games that support it out of the gate. It has to be explicitly supported by the game, meaning by the game maker. You can't just add it yourself. You know, I want to play keyboard and mouse in Call of Duty. It's like that probably will never happen. But curiously, one of the first games to support it is Fortnite, which is very much a shooter, and typically... If you were to go onto a PC and compete against p- uh, people in a game like Fortnite or Call of Duty or PUBG or whatever it might be, the p- if you had people who were on a keyboard and mouse and people on a hand controller, the people on keyboard and mouse would dominate that controller person every time. It, it's more precise, it's faster, and so forth. Yeah, so That's why they're not making cross-play in Fallout 76. Yes, exactly. So I'm curious to see how this works. Obviously, when you think about a console game, these things have been designed for the controller and the kind of specifics of the controller, I assume that keyboard and mouse will not have any kind of huge advantage. But this is a good twitchy game to kind of try that on. I'm curious to kind of see where that plays out. But, um, yeah, starting today. Exciting. I can stop playing yeah. Sea of Thieves. 
<laughs> well, there might be other reasons to stop doing that. Like Fallout 76 is out, like you said. Yeah. Hitman 2 it came out today or yesterday, maybe. Um, Do you, you play other games, but only cursorily because you don't want to really true. give up on Call of Duty? Is that Leo, right? there's, yeah. there's a prestige system in Call of Duty. Yeah, I, I know, I'm not I sure if I've ever stepped. I saw your picture. <laughs> <laughs> <But>. <laughs> yes. Wow. <laughs> What what I've did that signify, by the guns. way? Assault weapons. What's that? Assault rifles. Sorry. What's that? What did that picture signify? Uh, I assume you mean the prestige one. So yeah. as you level up, when you get to level 55, at, once you complete level 55, you can choose to prestige. And so there's different prestige levels. I don't even know how many there are on Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 4. Uh, usually there's 12-ish or 15 or whatever the number is. I usually finish it. So at some point, like in Call of Duty... World at War, once you hit whatever the final prestige is, you just keep leveling up and it just goes forever. So I'm probably like level, I don't even know anymore, 275 or whatever it is. But um, on Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty, I'm only on prestige two, but everything resets, right? So you can bring one thing forward every time you're prestige. So if you find like a gun you really like that you normally don't get to like level 44, you can say, this will be the thing I'm taking for this prestige. Like I'll always have this. And so once you get to like fifth prestige, you pretty much have everything you need right up front. So you don't start like, a, you know, with nothing, which is what happens because you go back to level one and you only have access to a limited number of things. You don't even, you can't even make custom classes. I could go on. The point is. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. The point is, this is a big part of my year every year. And, um. Last year was awesome because of the World War II game. This year is awesome uh, because this game's great. Um, Nuketown is coming. It's already on PS4. It'll be here next week. Um, there'll be new you know, levels over time. But actually, one game I'm, I am definitely going to try, which I think comes out next week for everybody, is Battlefield Five. Um, Say that if you again? The Super Battlefield Five. Oh, Battlefield the, Five. Okay. Yeah, the... Um, you know, the, the Call of Duty competitor. So that game takes place in World War II. Remember, Battlefield One was World War I. Um, that one looks great. So I'll give that one a shot. I mean, I'm not, you know, I can, I can Briefly. play other sides of the fence. Not, yeah. You know. yeah, a little bit. Do they have a prestige system? I don't know. I'll find out. <laughs> <clears throat> and I think we can safely say that concludes this Xbox. <laughs> that wasn't terrible. No. Mary Jo's applauding, gonging, and sighing in relief all at the same time. Can R I ask you a question? How have you never written a book about gaming? Yeah, really. You live Me? it. He's too busy you playing. Yeah, I guess that's real it. Gamer. I mean, yeah. you know, middle-aged guy plays uh, twitchy shooter games is not necessarily an exciting topic for most people. Mm. Um, I don't know. Most of my uh, most of the tips I would have would just be, you know, how to be a dick in Call of Duty and get away with it. <laughs> like I, I don't know. Hey, that's a title sure. with some real potential. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. I'm not sure what I have to offer. Um, Humor. <laughs> you know, I honestly, this is a terrible thing to say, but one of the things I really enjoy about Call of Duty is that the game type that I play, which is team deathmatch, and I play the hardcore version of it, meaning. Typically, if you get shot, just in grazed, you're dead. Like you die. It's a very, you die a lot, so it's hard to get kill, uh, scar streaks and so forth. Um, it, <laughs> it is the least team oriented game of any team type game. You would think like you're teaming up with buddies and you're going out to fight the world together. No, I am working to undermine these people at every step, and so are they. And it's like I really, I really enjoy that part of it. Mm -hmm. it there's, there's it fits something with your insidious. personality. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, it's it fits in nicely with my Massachusetts background. Um, yeah, you know, because this is the way I, I, you know, we interact with people. It is really <laughs> actually. It <laughs> explains it does explain a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the mass hole in me just enjoys this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Uh, let's take a break. Then we're going to get the Paul's tip of the week, which probably is. <laughs> Buy an Xbox. Yes, this is, this is more, we're not done with Xbox. Yeah, okay. Folks. And uh, Mary Jo's Enterprise Pick of the Week, which probably has something to do with Hadoop. Nope. And, nope. and then we're <laughs> going to get some beer. And I think this is one Paul is uh, being dedicated to Paul. It was my guess. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I knew it. But first, <laughs> a word from our sponsor. You must use LastPass. I, I can't believe you don't. 
LastPass is the number one most preferred password manager in the world. 16 million people use it. 30, I'm sorry, 43,000 businesses now uh, use it. And that's kind of what I'd like to talk to you about is you, if you're using LastPass at home because you like to have good, long, strong passwords, you don't want to reuse passwords, you don't want to have to memorize them either, you just want a, one password that logs you in and gets you into everything through LastPass, you like the idea of having a completely secure encrypted vault. You could put everything in. I put my driver's license, my passport pick, you know, backup in there. I put, you know, social security numbers. It's that safe. It's that secure. It's that it, no one can see it but me. Don't you think your company deserves something similar? Remember, you're giving employees the keys to the kingdom on a regular basis. The log into your your QuickBooks or your server, uh, your your you know, your your cloud backup, they have access to everything, your employees. And we know employees share passwords, not even just with people who work there. We know they, you know, they have some bad habits like using, you know, if they get to make up the password using the same password over and over, making the password be the cat's birth date and your name. and Or maybe they uh, put a post-it note because it's hard to remember, monkey123, and they put it right on the screen there. We know that. I saw War Games. Remember Matthew Broderick? He goes in the school office. He pulls out the drawer. All the passwords are written there. I saw, you saw War Games. You know. And it's not like people stopped doing that. No. It's worse now. We have more passwords than ever before. So your business needs LastPass. Because then you control your passwords. You, you, you have 100 policies. Things like setting what, you know, the master password requirements are for your employees making them use two-factor for instance you can make them you can say you must use two-factor to protect our passwords you you can actually give them access to resources without giving the password they can auto log into but they'll never see the password which means they can't change it they can't share it they don't know it you can restrict access after an employee leaves it is the best way to organize every private piece of information in your business and keep total control of it. If you require multi-factor, that's what we do here. We use, of course, we use LastPass Enterprise. Uh, we use uh, multi-factor. And if you want, you can use the LastPass Authenticator app, which is great because it's not the six-digit thing. It's just an approval that pops up. But you can use other, Microsoft Authenticator does the same thing. You can use other, All it works with all the authenticators. It actually works with Microsoft Active Directory credentials as well. So when you log in, you can set it up. When your employees log into AD, they are also logged into LastPass. I like that system. What else can I tell you? I mean, data is encrypted and decrypted only at the device level. So even the folks at LastPass don't have access to any of this stuff. Just authorized users. It works on every device, iPhone and Android, as well as Mac, Windows, and Linux. So, uh, I mean, it's literally the, you know, the first thing I install when I inst set up a new computer. Just set up a new iPad Pro, a new MacBook Air, uh, Pixel 3 phone, iPhones, all of them, first thing I do, install LastPass. Because that's the key to installing everything else. And by the way, on iOS 12 now, LastPass autofills, which is great. You start, you know, you go to somewhere and you want to enter a password, whether it's an app or a website. You start, you actually, all I do is I click in the password field. A little thing comes up at the bottom saying LastPass. You click it, fills it in. Awesome. It uses Face ID or Touch ID to unlock, which is really nice. It does that on Android devices too now. Uh, I can go on and on. You got to get LastPass. LastPass Premium for individuals. You should be using that, of course. It generates passwords too, so you don't have to come up with passwords. It'll generate a good, totally random password of the length you specify with the with the attributes you specify. LastPass families, we use that at home because that way I can make a folder for all the passwords Lisa and I share, like, you know, bills and stuff. And uh, anything I create a password for that she needs access to, I just, I save it in that folder. It's automatically shared with her. LastPass teams, if you're a small business, teams of 50 or fewer, or LastPass enterprise, which is uh, what we use. Actually, I'm pretty sure Russell set that up for us. He sets it up for all his clients. And, and frankly, I've been using LastPass for almost a decade since they started. Steve Gibson was the one who said uh, LastPass is, he uses it too, okay? He, he went, he talked to Joe Segrist, the creator, looked at the source code, gave it a thumbs up. Joined the more than 16 million people who trust LastPass, the number one most preferred password manager. Don't put this off. I know you've been thinking about it. Let's do it. 
Let's move your company to LastPass. LastPass.com slash twit. LastPass.com slash twit. And now it is time for Paul Thorat's Xbox tip of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the tip and the uh, app pick this week are decidedly Xbox flavored. Uh, although I'm going to add some Surface stuff to the tip. Good. All right. So uh, you guys probably got the memo on this, but apparently Black Friday is now a week, <laughs> not a day. <laughs> but um, like this a year, month guess, nowadays, really. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so for Microsoft, it runs from the 18th of November until the 26th, and they, like many companies, have pre-announced some of the you know best deals they're going to have. So. Uh, the very best, I think, is that the Xbox One X, which is Microsoft's 4K console, will be available for $400. Uh, it's $100 off from the normal price. Uh, There's going to be a bunch of games on sale. Obviously, for, uh, Forza Horizon 4 is 35% off. For Forza Motorsport 7, 50% off. On and on it goes. Um, you know, Xbox Game Pass for a dollar for their first month, which is not that on, you know non-standard of a deal and so forth. Um, there's some really good service deals coming too, by the way. So. Uh, the black version of Surface Laptop 2, which normally starts at $12.99, um, I think they've, up, I can't remember what's upgraded exactly, it's probably the storage is upgraded, but uh, it's going to be $300 off, meaning that it will be $9.99, which is the normal price for the uh, uh, the base model. Um, that's a tremendous deal. Also, uh, Surface Pro 6 in black with a t black type cover, starting at $999, that's a savings of $330. Um, amazing. Right, and so they're going to have other sales too. There'll be sales for other Surface devices, for other Xbox games and peripherals, and so forth, and uh, also for other Windows PCs. Uh, so pay attention to that as we get closer. Well, to, as we get to next week, actually. And then uh, the app pick of the week. Actually, two things. Let me th uh, in, uh, quickly. I didn't have a chance to really look at this, but if you're uh, using Cortana and have an iPhone, uh, Cortana 3.0 is now available in non-beta form on that platform. I think it was already available on Android because I'm using it, but maybe I'm in the beta. Uh, but I guess it just came out uh, in non-beta form on iOS. Um, but my actual pick is uh, Crackdown, the original Crackdown. Um, this game, I don't remember the year it came out, but um, it, it came out the year that Halo 3 was coming out. And the big deal with it at the time was if you bought this game, you could get on the Halo 3 multiplayer beta later that year. And so it sold like gangbusters. But the surprise was... Actually, Crackdown is an awesome game. In fact, um, people who play this know that part of the, it's an open world game. There, are, I think there are three or four different cities. You kind of you get superhero powers and you can jump around the city and fight people and so forth. But as you go, you're supposed to collect these orbs. And I don't remember the exact number, but if there are 100 of them, I, the way I ended it was I had collected 99 of them. <laughs> so imagine there's like this huge open world that's mine to explore and nothing can hurt me. And I couldn't find the last. <laughs> Or, but it still kind of it still kind of kills me. But anyway, this game is now completely free, and it's on Xbox backward compatibility. So if you have an Xbox 360, obviously you can get it for there. But if you have an Xbox One, you can get it for there as well. So just go to the Microsoft Store or the Xbox Store online, and you can just get it for free. Sweet. Um, kind of a no-brainer. Yeah, and the new version, uh, Xbox or Crackdown Three, is coming out February, if I'm not mistaken. Obviously, this game is going to have uh, much better gra uh, graphics and you know whatever. It's going to be an Xbox One native game. But seriously, the original Crackdown is a really, really fun game. And you were asking if I play any of the games. Like, this is one I played quite a bit of. It's a really. It's just, is this it's the one where you game. hack stuff or what? I can't remember. No, you. Uh, it's it's open. Like I said, open world with cities. You're kind of a superhero guy, but you can uh, oh, you can take on different powers as you yeah, go. Yeah, so yeah, it, yeah. You can't actually fly, but you can jump Climb so far. Walls. You basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. jump in from building to building. Yeah. It's it it's it's neat. No, that was a fun it's kind game. of a I fighting game. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, See, that wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, if we can rouse her from her slumbers, <laughs> Mary Jo Foley, with the Enterprise pick of the week. I was trying to think of a good segue from jumping from building to building to Power BI. Ooh, and I could not nice. think of one, but it's anyway. It's like superpowers for your business. Superpowers. That's good. That's good. Because superpowers is apt since Power BI, like all other Microsoft products, is getting the AI treatment. So that sounds like, yeah, of course, adding AI, stir. But in the case of Power BI, 
which is Microsoft's self-service data visualization tool and service, AI actually could make a difference in how people use this. So in Microsoft's announcement today about a preview of this being available, they talk about how if you bring AI to something like Power BI, it can let you unlock more value in the data that you're surfacing. So you can do things like automatically find patterns in the data, better understand what the data means, um, and use predictive technologies to figure out what businesses should be doing to drive their results. So they're doing four different things. They're um, adding image recognition and text analytics right into Power BI. They're adding some new analysis services so you can figure out key business metrics and what those mean and how you can influence them. New machine learning models built right into Power BI and integration of Azure machine learning within Power BI. So if you're somebody who uses Power BI now and you're like, yeah, it's pretty cool, but I still feel like I need to be a programmer to unlock all the value. These additions might make it more uh, understandable, easy to use, and something that you might take advantage of more if you uh, use the service now. So there's a preview of these out right now. You can go look for the Microsoft's blog post about this today and check it out. Get some business intelligence in your life. Ooh. <laughs> and you got another one for us. I do. Another enterprise pick. Um, Google for a while has had some tools to move people off Office 365 to G Suite. And a lot of people have said, why doesn't Microsoft do the reverse? Right. Well, they're going to do it. They added last week to the Office 365 roadmap a mention of something they're doing, probably coming out in Q2 of 2019. It's going to be a tool set for migrating people off G Suite and onto Office 365. Um, they're going to advertise this as the, the, kind of the selling point of this as we're doing this securely because you can do this yourself today. It's pretty onerous how you do it, but you can do it. Uh, and they're saying if you use our tools, there'll be no resting points along the way. There'll also be support for migration mailbox, migrating mailboxes and batches. So a lot of partners and bigger companies are interested in this and they're like, oh, I've always thought I, I might be interested in doing this, but it just looked too hard. I wonder um, if Microsoft is taking some of the things it learned migrating LinkedIn users off of G Suite and onto <laughs> Office 365 and they're like, hey, we just did this. Maybe we can turn this into a thing and sell it to customers. Um, That's maybe. interesting. Hmm. Right? Yeah. So... We don't, we don't know how much this will cost or how it will look, what kind of tools will actually be in the family, but they're working on it. So that's the enterprise pick two. Excellent. And now, in honor of Paul Thorat. <laughs> I represent this. <laughs> the uh, beer pick of the week is from Founders Brewing. And it's called Curmudgeon's Better Half. <laughs> actually, it's in honor of Paul Oh, actually, Thrut's it's about life. you. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. Right. Um, if you look at the label of the beer um, in the link I have, you will see Curmudgeon <laughs> and his better half. It looks half. a lot like the, uh, it's like the Windows Weekly um, promo graphic. Yeah. It kind of is. We should put that on the label. Is. That's a good idea. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah. So what this is, is an old ale and an old ale is kind of a strange beer style, kind of whatever you want it to be. It's usually a higher alcohol beer, not hoppy, usually darker, often barrel aged. Um, this particular one from Founders is aged in bourbon barrels that were previously mm. used for maple syrup. Oh, you had me at paper barrels. For maple I know. Syrup. And mm -hmm. they add a little molasses um, this beer is just delicious, but warning, 12.7%. What? <laughs> yeah, it's Holy pretty high cow. alcohol. <laughs> Do they make uh, they make beer that has less alcohol than that? I don't think it's even, <laughs> yeah. I think that's whiskey you're making there. Yeah. It's, oh, uh, they're high, though, there are much higher alcohol beers. Avery makes quite a few. Remember those? 17%, uh, 18%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now that my son's graduated um, from CU Boulder, I get I don't get to, get to go to Avery anymore. That was fun. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, this looks good for yeah, all the curmudgeons in your life. The what other reason I picked that? a strong beer is because I have some serious news to add at the end of the show. Oh, no. You've got me worried. Well, this is um, the end of the show, so add it. 
<laughs> this is yes. There's no no reason to uh, belabor Don't the point. Back. Well, yeah. um, I, I'm t I'm telling everyone on this podcast this news because some of you have gone to my favorite bar in New York City, Rattle and Hum East, and it's going to be closing. No, you've been single handedly keeping it alive for years. I know, I have. Um, yep, closing November 25th. They had a 10 year lease on their property, and the landlord went way up. Oh. On the lease, so they're not renewing it. And so it's closing. And this is a bummer because a lot of us Microsoft bloggers do Scroll down our to work the comments. in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of people do their work at Rattle and Hum. Um, keep going, keep we've going. used it as Windows Weekly headquarters. Leo's been there for oh, a meetup yeah. before. I loved it. I loved it. Keep yep. going. <laughs> I love it. I love oh, there's Paul's reaction. What no, did you say? I didn't see yours. No, 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 no. <laughs> Yeah. So Rattle West is going to stay open and Beer Authority, th those are both their bars too, but it's not the same. Rattle East is our home. Hey, get Mary ready. Jo, get ready. You have a solemn. Google and Amazon both right. are going to do to Those New guys York. are going to need to drink. They're going to do to New I know, York you're what right. they did to San Francisco. This is just the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say it. Don't say uh, that. <laughs> rents are going to go up. The yuppies are moving in. Was it one of the late no. night guys said it's it's the Amazon thing so great because they're finally going to put New York on the map? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good line. Excellent. Somebody excellent. had to do Google it. Google said they're going to double their uh, presence in New York as well. I know. Yeah. Yep. Well, Mary Jo, you're going to have to find a, a suitable replacement. So let's get you know serious about this, please. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll make this my personal assignment over the holidays. Believe me. I mean, I'll, you know, I'll stalk Agnes as long as I have to, but I'd like to find a, <laughs> you know, a suitable. Yeah, we need a place, place because, <sighs> yeah, we need a place to do our meetups and, yeah. That is so I sad. Know. And it's and it's not because they want to close, it's because the rent. No. Yeah, they don't want to close. I can't tell you how many times this has happened to places that I really care about. You know, they jack the rent. They literally double the rent. It happened to us. Yeah. And then like, yeah, yeah, it's not going to work. By the way, brick house. Oh, yeah, you guys us, too. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yep. Oh, it's just, it's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, not to end on a downer note, but... <laughs> well, thanks, yeah. Debbie Downer. Debbie Downer. <laughs> <laughs> Where's my gong? That's the worst yeah, news I've I, heard all year. I have a dream. Yes. Yes. We Do should tell. relocate Twit to New York City. And okay. I, have better, I have a better dream. And what? Why don't we relocate us to California... And build, yeah, we could just take over Lagunitas. I hear they're not doing mm -hmm. that well, and we could just move in. Are there. you kidding? Man, no. they sell tons of beer. <laughs> well, they're they doing must be fine. Doing well. They Listen, sold, I, they, they're, they're the owned only, by a like, larger company. I think it's called Heineken. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. Oh, right. I was going to say they're all over Europe. They're doing yeah. something. Yeah, right. no, that's okay. why Heineken yeah. purchased yeah. them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, where could we go? I know the British Virgin <laughs> Islands. No. Uh, <laughs> Hawaii, Hawaii, Colorado. There you go. Let's move. You know, you wanted to go back to Avery, and we can move. We could because Avery I think, is my favorite brewery. I always actually was always my fantasy that Twit wouldn't would be a bar, not, like a like a place mm -hmm. like Rattle and Hum plus the shows. Yeah. Right, Leo. Talk is cheap. Let's just do this. Okay. <laughs> you know. Okay. Let, let's combine <laughs> all the things we care about into one thing. We're coming out to New York in a couple of weeks. Oh, you are nice. I'll scout locations. All right. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> no, uh, we're not. We're going. We are, but we're going briefly. Uh, just, uh, just to go to a couple of shows and then nice. kind of coming back real quick. We do. We. I, Lisa's not a fan that much of New York, but uh, she likes oh. the culture. Um, <laughs> she doesn't like. You know, she says it the smells, people. which I don't. It smells. <laughs> I don't oh, understand. well, in the summer, it definitely does. <laughs> yeah, so we're going in the winter. Yeah. I like how it smells because that combination of burnt chestnuts, <laughs> sure. yeah. human waste, the winter, bum. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and, that kind of uh, urine and, and old garbage kind of it's, thing. Yeah. To me, that's home. That's the that's sure. home. I know. But yeah. I can understand she just, she's not fond of it. So when we go, uh, we go quickly and we, but I, you know, she likes to go see the shows. She loves the culture yeah. in New York. Right. It's like she feels uh, like a New Yorker to me. <laughs> she is a New Yorker. That's she says the same thing. Yeah, yeah. she is kind Try of. Try cross the street with her. She's I'm walking here. I'm walking. I don't think I've ever been as afraid of a woman as I am of your wife. <laughs> I, I wouldn't cross her. You're not even married to her. I know. 
She's scary from a distance. No, she's awesome. She's really awesome. No, she's the best. I mean, I yeah. I, I have to say that. No, I'm we need it. Twit needs somebody. <laughs> you know? needs somebody uh, with some cojones because I am completely emasculated. Yeah. So. Well, you you uh, you you found the right mix. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she wears the pants. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, um, yeah, we'll see you out there. Maybe we can go. Let's see. No, we're gonna miss the closing. Oh, I was thinking we could go for one last. Yeah. One last pint. I wish it wasn't happening so quick because I would like yeah, to fast. go for the closing or before the closing. And it's like the day before Thanksgiving. I can't. Yeah. It was very like sudden. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah. You know, two yeah. more weeks, I would have made a, a point of it. You know, now, how about the servers? Because they have such nice people there. Are they uh, moving over? To yeah. The... A lot of them are moving to Good. Rattle West and Beer Authority. Good. Yep. I'm glad to hear that. Well, we're sorry to hear that. Does that guy I still know. own a place? Does he own a place in Florida? No, he sold it. He did. Own a place in Florida, a, a, a yeah. pub. Yep, yeah. which was called Rattle and Hum. Also, <laughs> oh really? Oh funny. Yep. Is it still called Rattle and Hum? What's, I don't know. It was in Fort Lauderdale. What's the genesis of the name? Is it? You uh, too. Oh, you too. Rattle you know. and Hum. The the yep. album, of course. I don't know if you caught this. Um, it's an Irish pub. <laughs> ah, it's Rattle. And by the way, semi unique in the city of New York because really you can't. It's hard to find one. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> It's very. Few. It's hard to find a real one. You know, we're yeah. traveling around Europe. We're in, uh, I think we're in Portugal in the Porta Mao, and there are more Irish pubs <laughs> than there are yeah. Portuguese. I saw that too. Yeah, it's yep. Yep. everywhere you go. There's an Irish pub everywhere mm -hmm. you yep. go. In Europe, everywhere in Europe. In Europe. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that's wild. that's the truth. I've witnessed that as well. Okay, kids, uh, we're going to wrap this uh, guy up. Uh, I want right. to thank everybody for being here. We do Windows Weekly. On Wednesdays, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. If you want to come by and watch the show, you can go to twit.tv slash live. Uh, you can watch or listen at that uh, location. If you do that, though, you should absolutely get into the chat room. Where there's a bunch of great people. Lots of fun. And also these guys. And then there's these guys. <laughs> yeah. IRC.twit.tv. Yep. Rattle and Hum St. Pete. I guess it's still there, Eric. Eric Duckman mm -hmm. found the, the problem with Rattle yeah. West is it's not near where Mary Jo lives. So we need something yeah. right by the. It's not that far. Empire State. <laughs> well, no, I know, but come on, it, it's night and day. It's Times Square. That's more the problem. Oh, but. that is a problem. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Plus, what is it? it's like in the front door of like a Comfort Inn or something or a it, yeah Holiday, Holiday Inn Express yeah. or whatever. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. kind of stinky. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you we'll can find get, a place, guys. We will. Don't worry. You can get on-demand versions of this show at twit.tv slash WW or subscribe in your favorite podcast application. And that way you get it the minute it's available. Thank you all for being here. And we'll see you next time on Windows Weekly. Bye-bye.